So let's look at first well, reversing the aging of uh, vision, and we'll look at three aspects: presbyopia, not being able to read well, glaucoma, and age-related macular degeneration. So presbyopia, you can already preserve your eyesight partly through um, some lifestyle factors. Uh, and one of those factors is the temperature. If you live in an area like Ecuador, you have two options. You live either in the mountains or you live in the sea. And in the mountains, you have a colder temperature and there's also more exposure to ultraviolet light, which is not good for um, presbyopia. But actually the temperature is, is important and those people there have problems with reading uh, most of them around age 42 and a half. But when you go in the coast area of Ecuador, near the beaches, you actually have a, a warmer temperature, 12 degrees or 12 and a half degrees uh, Celsius warmer, and 33 degrees Fahrenheit warmer. And basically, presbyosa starts there at a younger age, uh, below the 40 years. So there's about three years sooner presbyopia where the average temperature is higher. So that's maybe not a good effect of living uh, in a warmer uh, climate. Presbyopia, what about nutritional deficiency and supplementations? Well, um, there are um, a whole series that can help, but I will explain them in the model. We, we might run out of time otherwise here. Uh, here's just to show you that in, among the hormones, there are uh, children with growth hormone deficiency have hypermetropia. It's the presbyopia of, of young uh, ch children. And, um, and that is corrected with growth hormone. So growth hormone seems to correct that. So why not, would it not correct the presbyopia? And uh, presbyopia on hormone su supplementations, if you have to give hormone supplementation, we, we will look at all the studies that show effects, but this is more or less the doses of female hormones that you need to give and of male hormones to women. This is the dose you need to give for men, actually. Uh, either uh, you give a transdermal preparation or uh, um, an injectable. This is about the doses that are uh, efficient to um, delay or decrease the impact of presbyopia. And this is the dose for insulin for diabetics that may help, but then diabetics the, with real diabetes and, and melatonin, uh, this is those that may help, but there are also a solution in, in, in drops that you could put in eye that may help. And glaucoma, how to reverse it. You see that coffee actually can increase by two millimeters of mercury, the intraocular pressure, which is a lot, you know, the intraocular pressure is usually between 10 and 20. If it's above 21, you get, um, it's excessive hypertension. Um, and if you increase, for example, from 15 to 17 or from 20 to 22, it, it, it can make the difference. So stop drinking caffeinated coffee if you have, um, and so you see that if you have two cups of coffee a day, in some people it can increase seven millimeters mercury. So if you're even at 15, which is the average of the population, you go to 22, you're in, in the glaucoma range where there's hypertension in the, in the eye. So it's really, and it's not the coffee, the caffeine actually. So I was wrong to say you decaffeinate coffee because it's some other coffee extracts that increase the, the pressure. Uh, probably the fact that you burn those coffee um, beans uh, make that it get a little toxic. And that seems following the researchers to be the reason why eye pressure increases. It's like a reaction of inflammation to those toxins. Um, also in glaucoma, low magnesium, B1, vitamin B1 and, B, and vitamin C uh, are related with glaucoma. The average level is about 20, 30% lower of these nutrients, so might uh, come into, we, we know that uh, low magnesium uh, levels can give temporary vision defects by vasospasma of the arteries that go to um, the, the eye. And there's also um, studies, and we'll see those studies, where there's low vitamin A, zinc, manganese, iron, omega-3, polyunsaturated fatty acids. So we'll, we'll look at some of that literature.
glaucoma um, is also related to hormone levels. And typically, the first thing to think of is hypothyroidism, low thyroid function. And you see all these people, they are swollen faces and have low thyroid function. And in, on the average, a hypothyroid patient has four millimeters of mercury high intraocular pressure. That's too much. And the reason is, uh, especially chronic open angle of glaucoma, we'll explain what it is in, in the model, is well, 16 to 22% of patients with over hypothyroidism have this sort of glaucoma, that's a lot. And uh, so the reason is, of course, there's myxedema in hypothyroidism and those mucopolysaccharides pile up also inside of the eye and um, uh, decrease the evacuation of the fluid that is in the eye. So basically, thyroid may help to decrease glaucoma, also sex hormones, there are studies on that and we'll show some of the references. Melatonin also, and these are more or less the sort of um, uh, doses for treatment of treatment you, you should give. Uh, Prenolone seems also to have some effect and Grotamon and IGF-1. And, and then to avoid or to take lower doses of glucocorticoids. Although it's, it's not the hydrocortisone, it's mostly with synthetic derivatives that you have the problem. And you have to add when you give a cortisol, always DHA that protects also against cataract of the eye and, and other things. So here you have associations with female hormones and glaucoma and, 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 and it's showing that actually female hormones are protective. Estradiol protects even the cells from damage when there's high pressure. So basically it's interesting. Now, what about age related macular degeneration? This is how a person looks like. That's the vision with um, age related macular degeneration. You see here, um, it's an eye disease actually uh, of the macula, the central portion, portion of the retina. This is the retina when you look inside of the eye. Um, and you see that with aging, there's an increased risk of macular degeneration. Actually, uh, individuals at age 75 have more than 30% have age-related macular degeneration. I've done genetic tests and I'm very plus, plus, plus for the two uh, genes uh, that see or the poly gene, genetic polymorphism that uh, promote actually age-related macular degeneration. So I'll see if I can avoid it by having good hormone nutritional treatment. So let's uh, uh, do a meeting in um, on 63, so in 12 years time to see if it works. Um, if it works as well as for my arteries of my character arteries, why wouldn't it work as well for my eye, eyes? The majority of people with macular degeneration have an early form of the condition experience minimal visual loss, but some have more progressive one. And that's why we need to be careful. And certainly people like me who have genetic polymorphic, they have to be even more uh, careful. So uh, we know that uh, blue eyes have two times more risk of progression of age-related macular degeneration, progression to a wet form, which is the dangerous form. I have blue eyes, okay? Another reason for me to be ex especially careful with my eyes. And one of the treatments that can help is a nutritional supplementation. For example, lutein. Lutein, uh, 12 months of 10 milligrams per day of lutein can really be helpful. Uh, you see here, uh, you have an improvement of uh, more letters uh, that you can read on a Snellen chart from far uh, when you take during 12 months, 10 milligrams of lutein. And it's even better to give lutein alone then was a vitamin and mineral supplement. You see, you had better improvements here. So other improvements, lithium with or without antioxidant, you had, um, uh, or, well, we'll talk about the other improvements later because it might be a little complicated and we have a little short time to be, in, but you do have other improvements that are really um, worth uh, having. Now about hormone deficiency, I just want to show you one of the hormones that can give, and that is melatonin. These are real pictures. 67 year old male retired teacher. 
his visual acuity had been decreasing. What do we see when we look at the retina? You see that this is sort of big bleeding with maybe a fibrosis. That's bleeding and that's fibrosis in the eye. That's very damaging for the eyesight. And you see much less here, much less, much less bleeding and much less fibrosis. And actually, melatonin was given. I think the dose was uh, three milligrams per day. And um, so this must be so about like six months later. And the visual acuity had improved uh, or, or was stabilized, but there was a remarkable improvement in supranatal hemorrhage. He was getting blind there on the left and on the right, it's much better. Same picture, same type of picture, a lot of fibrosis and, and hemorrhages here. And you see what happens when melatonin is given, eyesight was improved, like sort of repair. So simple treatment, not expensive, good effects.